Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about flipped learning, what a flipped classroom is, and how you can best integrate that into Microsoft OneNote, and then link that up with Microsoft Teams in the assignment section to try and get the best of both worlds, because um, flipped learning through OneNote is great, but if we add in the assignment section in Teams, it's even better. So first, quickly talk about what flipped learning is, what this concept is. If you are new to it, it is becoming more and more popular, I guess, as technology gets better um, across across the world. It's something that I've been doing for a few years now, um, and I don't think I could ever go back to, I guess, a normal or traditional style of teaching. So if we have very quickly look at the difference, so how it works is we've got a traditional classroom, I guess, where the teacher generally, um, that lecture style teaching will deliver content or curriculum out to the students, standing out the front, I guess, and talking, the students are sitting there listening. Now, then the students will then, I guess, apply their understanding of that as they go home for homework. So that's, a, so I guess, you look at it as, I guess, an old school way of teaching now, but some of us still do it to some degree. Um, but moving into a flipped classroom, it really turns that on its head, and the teacher records themselves teaching the content on some kind of a device. So or a program. So I'm using Microsoft Stream at the moment, which is really cool. And it has this nice little insert video um, screen as well. So you can see your face and emotions, which adds another level of engagement to your videos as well as the kids can see um, your hand actions, your emotions, things like that, which is quite cool. But you can use lots of other programs, um, Screencast-O-Matic, QuickTime, depending on what device you're on, any app that will let you use a screen recording um, is gonna be the way to go. Record yourself teaching the content. So whether you're teaching from a PowerPoint, a OneNote, whatever it is, pushing that content out and explaining that, trying to make it engage, and I guess using your highlight draw tools, that sort of stuff, if you're using Microsoft OneNote. But essentially, the teacher pre-records that and then it makes that video available for the students. So that's the process I'm gonna show you today is making, not necessarily making that video, but making that video available for the students to watch and then be able to manage that afterwards once you've created and pushed out that video to the students. So the students then sit and watch the lecture or the content prior to the lesson. And the advantage of that is they already now have some base knowledge and understanding of the content before they walk into the classroom. Then the class time, I guess, is a bit more efficient and you can then build on that learning, sort of deepen that understanding as already have some level of knowledge on the contents. So the video is generally kept quite simple. And then in the class is more about class discussion, building on that, think working on those collaborative, higher order thinking skills and that sort of stuff within the classroom. So you should, if you sort of move to this uh, flip style classroom, actually buy back a bit of time in your lessons as there's less time doing that sort of chalk and talk at the start because that's done prior to the lesson. Now, how to set this up in OneNote is really quite easy. Um, I'm going to go to um, a page that I've sort of preloaded out. Uh, I generally go with the notes and questions you still have um, under my videos, but embedding a video is quite quick. So whether you're using Microsoft Stream, YouTube, um, or ClickView, there's probably a few others that work. It's very simple and easy to embed a video into your OneNote page. So I'm gonna go to my OneNote page, our OneNote team, and I'm just gonna literally copy and paste the link to this video and paste that into my OneNote page. So I'm gonna hit share. You can just copy and paste the URL as well straight into OneNote and up the top here, I'm going to hit paste and that video now embeds straight into my page and that will play within my OneNote. So I'm going to drag it out a little bit just to make it a bit bigger for when the students are watching the video in OneNote um, that it's just easy for them to be able to see everything. It does post this link up the top here. I generally, you can leave it there, but I generally delete it. Um, the video will still work and play fine. It doesn't have any impact on the video. It's just the link that will take you to that video on YouTube. I sometimes find that as a distraction or, or an excuse for people to go to YouTube. And that's something that I don't really want my students to. I'm trying to keep them in the one platform, which is OneNote or Microsoft Teams. So I delete that link. And now I'm essentially, my page is ready to go. Now, like I said before, I generally go with the notes or questions you still have style set up behind it. I always get the kids to do something. Um, it's a bit, I guess, shows their understanding of the content, uh, but also it's a bit of evidence for me that they have actually watched it. They have some understanding and you can also gauge, I guess, their level of understanding by some of the notes or some of the things they write. You can have specific questions, which I do sometimes as well, specific questions on the video or on the content in below. 
But I always like to have that question, do you still have? I guess it's a variation on that Cornell note style taking. You could set your pages up with the Cornell note style take. I know some teachers are very much um, invested in that. So especially if your kids have got those stylus pens um, on your Windows devices, it's a very cool feature to use. So like I said, it's a varied uh, version of that, but if you're gonna throw that questions you still have option in there, make sure you're willing to follow up on that. So whether you go through, I guess, prior to the lesson and have a quick look at some of those questions and you answer those questions either in OneNote or in Teams, or maybe in class, you sort of just use a review student work feature, you click through those pages really quickly, and then you maybe have a class discussion about those answers, or maybe we throw out some answers to the students to be able to answer as well. So just be sure, if you're gonna throw it in there, you gotta be willing to follow up on it because students will, they'll ask questions. We want them to be inquisitive and I guess, maybe challenge them or see what connections this, this video brings to maybe their prior learning, or if they want to extend their thinking into sort of other realms, that sort of stuff. We want to encourage that and ensure that they're not, you know, asking question after question, not get any answers, eventually just give up and stop asking questions. So um, like I said, I think it's a really valuable tool to put in there, but you just got to make sure you really to follow up on it. So now that I've created my OneNote page, I could just to distribute that through OneNote right now and the students who have access, they can watch it, complete it, and then I can track it and monitor it with the review student work feature. That's, I guess, a very efficient, simple way to do it, but I'm gonna take a little bit further. I'm gonna integrate Microsoft Teams and the assignment section is into this now. So I'm gonna move across to Microsoft Teams with my year nine demo class, and I'm going to create a new assignment, but I've already um, got one pre-ready to go in my drafts. So I've just made up a title. It's called Flip Lesson Minecraft. I find once you're creating lots of assignments in Teams, I generally try to differentiate it at the start, whether it's a worksheet, flip lesson, um, content, case study, whatever it is, because um, sometimes I can have multiple assignments on the same topic. So it's easy for the kids to differentiate it by just giving, the, I guess, the gist of what it is at the start, followed by the title, uh, creating tags, I'm preemptively creating tags. I'm hoping the grade book will eventually allow you to sort by tags. So I'll be able to hit flip lessons and then be able to see, um, I guess, just the flip lessons and how many students are completing, not completing, what score they're getting for their flip lessons, that sort of stuff. Adding resources, we're going to integrate that page now, our OneNote page, and we're going to distribute that as an assignment, which just adds a whole lot of extra features. Um, as you see in one of my other videos, I go through how to actually set this up as well. So I'm gonna choose my content library, which is where I have that page. Go to my flip lesson folder. I'm gonna find my flip lesson. I'm gonna attach it. And then I'm gonna send it to the student sections, which I've made a typo there. Flip lessons. And that is now going to um, distribute that page for me, which is a really cool feature. I'm gonna give it a score out of five. You could just leave it with no score. I just go with an A to E style scale. You could create a Rubik if you wanna take it that next level but um, we wanna try and keep things simple and efficient. We assign it to our class, all students. I got the date um, and I generally set it for the start of my next lesson. So, um, so let's say my lesson is tomorrow at two o'clock period five, that's when my next lesson. So that's when it's gonna be due. So the kids have up until then to complete it. And the scheduling feature in this is really cool. So if you've created a few assignments or I'm ready to go, you can have all your flip lessons scheduled out for the week or the couple of weeks ahead to pop up periodically in between or before those lessons. They can pop up the end of one lesson and be due at the end of the start lesson. So it involves a little bit of thinking and timetable and scheduling, but if you've got the time, um, preemptively you can do all of that for you just by using that scheduling assignment feature. Um, I don't need to worry about any of these options. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign that now. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds till it will actually pop up or generate as assignment, I will get a notification up here soon. But then it allows me to very easily be able to track the students. So by credit in Teams, one, it notifies the students that it's there, that there's a notification. So the kids get notified that assignment and a flip lesson is now there for them to be created. If you just distribute it in OneNote, they don't get that notification. You sort of have to verbally direct them to that page. And then when we go to the next part of them being able to you monitoring it and looking through the students' work, and them handing the work in. One, it's very quick and efficient for you to be able to see the student's work. You can see whether they've viewed it um, or handed it in or not handed in means they haven't even opened it yet. I can see a student view, but I'm gonna quickly go and have a look at a student. One of my star students, Matthew Beaton, and you can see that video is gonna load now. So the students um, will move into, I guess, the assignment section here. 
they can click on the YouTube video, they can watch it, and they can do their notes below and then add any questions as well. So the advantage of obviously doing a video is they can stop, pause, rewind, do it again. They can go at their own pace. They're generally doing this in a quiet place, probably at home or in their room. A lot more advantage to a teacher delivering a lesson live where they don't get to th that stop or replay. Kids often aren't comfortable asking questions, so they won't. <clears throat> So this is a really cool way to, I guess, get a better understanding of content and allow students to take in information in the way that they want to and at their own pace. So I can now go in and quickly move through um, the student's work, have a look at their notes, have a look at any questions. Again, I can answer straight back in there. I can answer in the feedback section. I could give them a score and then return their work straight back to them and then just click through <coughs> every student as they go. All right, so there you go. A very, um, probably dragged out a little bit, a video on how to integrate flipped learning and adding green uh, Microsoft Teams, the assignment section and Microsoft OneNote. Thanks for watching. Ciao.